Hi, I'm Stephen Paul Judd. I'm an artist and a filmmaker. I'm not a costume. Our people aren't costumes. Don't be a jerk. My uh, academic art project is on the artist Stephen Paul Judd, who is a Kiowa, Choctaw from Oklahoma. Stephen Paul Judd does the things that media, belong to your ancestors, art, hopefully now is indigenous art. the curve is starting to go back to more of a, I guess, them getting their justice or their rights. Steve Judd, artist Steve Judd, filmmaker Steve Judd, um, comedian maybe, I don't know, I think he's funny, doesn't really go on stage or anything. He uses humor to decolonize by educating to a visual language. Haki mas man ki wo wa kani chonan. The time awa wa kwanonak. Aki ayatu wa yak kwa aki aku sawak i mantu. Really, one is just a sense of decolonization, taking back some iconic mm, images that maybe were native at one time. Kapotam sayakat man. You know, as uh, as native artists, I you know, there's a we you. Inherent in us is a fight against negative images. Um, that let's be real, white folks have put out for a long time. And so, you know, as we get rid of this stuff and these cobwebs of the past, and you know, naturally there's going to be a void that needs to be filled. And artists like Steve Judd are filling that void. You know, they're creating images, they're creating things for young people to grab hold of and 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 be proud of as natives and how, you know, kind of captures their identity and something that they can be proud of and kind of hold as a as a uh, banner for themselves and 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 kind of help express who they want to be and who they are. To represent ourselves, and that is something that is fundamental to determining your identity as a person is the power to. Um, say what it is that makes you who you are and who you are as a native person. This is a constant theme seen in his work. Right, so like when I was, you know, in college, Pulp Fiction came out, right? Right when I first went to college and that was like my movie, man. I love that movie. Yeah. But I was like, man, I wish it could have been a badass Indian dude in this, some native guy just, I don't know what I was thinking, like a beaded gun with beaded grips or something. Yeah. And I thought, man, it'd be cool if there was a native dude in this. By watching, by watching television, Stephen Paul realized nobody looked like him. The lead was always a non-native character, kind of coming in to save the natives. So I wanted to, always wanted to make a movie where a native person was saving a non-native rather than the other way around. So that's the reason I did that. And the reason I didn't want him to be like a medicine man or super good, I wanted to be an anti-hero because I love anti-heroes growing up. I think they're more interesting characters. And I just feel like the anti-hero just more compelling characters I think you know someone rough around the edges I think we all know someone like that or maybe we are that person but I, I always enjoy the anti-hero with the heart of gold so Stephen Paul's work addresses negative stereotypes put on by non-Indians towards the indigenous First Nations people of America that we see our stereotypes or the flip side of that is often invisibility, um, that Native peoples just aren't represented in any sort of facet of, um, of contemporary life. These are not images that people get to see on an everyday basis. So this is a celebration of Native peoples being able to uh, push back on the stereotypical imagery and also um, offer these artists show a side that people often don't see. Um, so the humor and the vibrancy um, and a lot of the um, just excitement of being a Native person, what it means to be Indigenous in the 21st century. Humor is used darkly with Indians given the past historical context. You let it go. Indians laugh harder at things than anybody because we're free. We're free. There's a whole thing. You guys gonna stay tonight? <laughs> Doesn't that just burn you up when people come over and they never leave? <laughs> yeah, we'll leave after Thanksgiving, you know. Yeah. Yeah. People, Indian people have the best sense of humor in the world. And I think that's what made us survive all this stuff. The parallel would be the Jewish people. They, they endured a lot of things. 
And the origin of comedians in America were, were Jewish and predominant. I don't think there's any culture on the face of the globe that doesn't have humor. And some people feel that humor is uh, the window into the soul of a people. He's an Indian brother, uh, Iroquois Nation, uh, Mr. Charlie Hill. Please welcome me. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? This is what we're doing. What I, what I like is being a comedian. It's I'm like a mockingbird. I don't say anything that people didn't say before. I just put a little funny spin on it. I uh, know a lot of you white people never seen an Indian do stand-up comedy before, you know. Like for so long you probably thought that Indians never had a sense of humor, you know and feeding them off into the religious educational systems. So basically, they were telling these now the native people that we couldn't be who we were anymore, Indian. We couldn't be Indians. We needed to be white. We never thought you were too funny either. <laughs> You're stuck on stupid. They really don't know shit about us. And, and when we bring it up or say something, uh, they think we're... Uh, being real angry instead of saying the matter of fact. You can people back there putting their chairs in a circle. <laughs> Modern industrial society as we know it, which is just in and of itself the reflection of one way of doing things, is only 300 years old. And that shallow history shouldn't suggest to any of us that we have all of the answers for all of the challenges that will confront us in the ensuing millennia. People think, uh, I remember this Gallagher, his uh, comedian, he said to me, uh, well, so uh, you guys don't want modern conveniences or this and that? I said, it ain't about that. And it gets back to that Harvard guy. So using tutorials found online and YouTube, I taught everything I know in Photoshop. Yeah. And now I get jobs doing graphic design work. <laughs> so it's so great. Like literally, it was just, yeah. it was YouTube and like tutorials. But yeah, and I love, like that's my favorite thing to do is make these like kind of mashups. Cause yeah. I like, I like Indian people. I like pop culture. Yeah. It's like my favorite thing is mixing them together. Cause it's yeah. like, if I was a kid, I would have loved to have seen this, right? Oh, yeah. Staples Marshall, man, going through a native village. This is awesome. So it's me, it's what rocked when I was a kid. Yeah, this would have, yeah. if I had saw this, I'd been like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So I love making those things a lot. So like, I'll make those even when, like, when I'm traveling like this. I was in D.C. last week, and I made one just last week. You know, yeah. E.T. Like e. flying across the moon with this Indian dude looking up at it. Yeah, yeah. I like to make things that hopefully are two levels. One is just very superficial. Oh, it's kind of crazy. But then like an Indian or a native can see something like, oh, I know what he's, I know where that's coming from a yeah. little bit. But I also like when kids just dig it, you know. So totally. I don't mind if it's just kids just super happy because they get to see something crazy yeah. they can wear and stuff. Like, to me, that makes me feel good because yeah. you remember when we were kids, we didn't have like we didn't that have, choice. Yeah. Yeah, that exactly. wasn't even an option. The portrayal of indigenous in Hollywood or film. Someday I will get into the movies, right? And then I will win in a game. Is not a new issue. And I grew up without anything. And no, I mean, I didn't read, nobody showed me a book written by an Indian until I was 21 years old. Indigenous artists such as Gail Trimbley has covered this issue with her film baskets. The piece I have in the show is called um, it was never about playing cowboys and Indians. It's a film basket made out of 16 millimeter film. Man, the cowboys always win. The cowboys don't always win. Yeah, they do. The cowboys always win. Look at Tom Mix. What about John Wayne? Man, he was about the toughest cowboy of them all, isn't it? To be Indian, but also to have mainstream dreams that are supported and honored. You know, that's the thing that happened to us as Indians. We got so wrapped up in the idea of tribe, we started thinking it meant we're all supposed to be the same. But being a tribe means you support everybody's eccentricities. Being a tribe is not about conformity. Being a tribe is loving every member of your tribe and, and valuing everything they bring to the tribe. It's, it's this conglomeration, this community of people who bring their talent. She addresses issues through Indian country in a contemporary form and perspective. Well, and that's the cool thing, you know, I mean, like, um, there was no t-shirt with uh, the Hulk with Indian braid, you know, yeah, the Indian Hulk. I got it, I got it, yeah, I, I did this piece 
you know, it says uh, Indian Hulk gets mad when treaties are broken, and it's like Bruce Banner reads treaties are broken, he turns to the Hulk. Well, I had like a letter from this mom, and she's like, oh, I want to thank you so much for doing that because my son was getting picked on at school for having long yeah. hair. Uh -huh. But now he saw this image, he's like, hey, mom, look, the Hulk has that's hair like awesome. me. You know, so when you hear that something like so that, cool. you're like, dude, that's, that's, yeah. Identity and the ability to portray oneself's own identity is constant themes in Indian country and a step towards decolonization. To me, because I feel like that, you know, and even in seeing your work, you do it too, because we, we definitely think about our past and, and, and being in a visual medium, the perceptions of Native Americans and, and also teaching people things that maybe they didn't know, yeah. you know, living yeah. in Oklahoma with the land run and stuff like yeah. that, you know, this is like, yeah. I think if people knew the truth, the indigenous philosophy of being connected or balanced with harmony, walking in beauty, may have the Navajo called it, is seen in his art. Probably do. Well, just, there's just probably, yeah. right man, in, until until someone stops me, yeah, there, I'm sure there's probably some of it's kind of protected under satire, yeah. and. Um, there's also if you change a certain percentage yeah but there's definitely i'm definitely not across the line so one day disney's george lucas since he sold to disney is probably yeah. gonna put a stop to all my star wars stuff yeah, yeah but i'll keep doing it until so if they say stop i'll stop but i'll just keep doing it It just seems like there's no way they could do you know because you change the concept like you know you make a you make an image of et going across the moon on a bike it's not about et it's about the indian looking at there it's about the et like or the indian seeing this pop culture thing and you yeah know, being a part of it so know? like for instance i did a piece where um the ad at right the big piece yeah. from empire strikes back is, is going to this indian these indians are watching them and so that's oh yeah it's 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 weird looking because whoa it's a star wars thing in the 1800s but also for people that know the story of the empire moving in on these lands on the rebels you know as an yeah. indian person you see that you can automatically think of the, yeah. the, the the you know the army coming in i did one with the monopoly guy and he's he's, he's putting his hand on a boarding school because the boarding schools to me look like little monopoly pieces yeah. so for someone could look at it and go, oh that's just monopoly hey that looks like the monopoly pieces but for a native that knows those are boarding schools and, yeah. they, and they can see what the monopoly meant so to me it's kind of I really hope that, you know, I, and in fact, all of them have a little story to them like that, yeah. you know, but I'm just as fine with someone saying, hey, that's funny, Star Wars, that's cool too, you know, look at it whatever level you want to look at. Those things, I pretty much, and, I, and when I put something out there, because like you said, because I'm so worried about critiques, I always try to know why I'm doing something, yeah. no matter how silly it is, I always try to know, yeah. like, what does this mean to me? Sometimes I wonder, will they ever get it? You kind of wonder, because they're really stuck on stupid. If people have been in America all these years, and we've been right in their faces all this time. They know nothing about us. How can they not look at their science, their history, their medicine in the same myopic way? If they don't know us, how the hell are they going to go around the world tell other people how to live? And they don't even know how to teach themselves how to live here. Stephen Paul's art is important because he addresses what it is to be not only a human, but indigenous in the 21st century. Gloria said our job is to teach America how to act human, and I always like that. These other peoples of the world aren't failed attempts at being modern or failed attempts at being us. On the contrary, contrary by definition, they're unique manifestations of the human heart, of the human imagination. When asked the meaning of being human, they respond with 6,000 different voices, and collectively those voices become our overall human repertoire for dealing with the challenges that will confront us all in the ensuing millennia. And why should you care? You should care because his art is telling the collective story of humanity. And this is why it's important to understand what is the relationship between different cultures and the environment upon which they depend. The Indian or indigenous people of North America's story is not only ours, but yours. Indigenous people all around the world are just like us. They have their children, they have their families. They're neither the sentimental nation. nor are they weakened by nostalgia. The human beings, the people, see the spiritual in the natural through sense and feeling. Everything is related. All the things of earth and in the sky have spirit. Everything is sacred. Confronted by the alien nation, 
the subjects and the citizens see the material religions through trauma and numb. Nothing is related. All the things of the earth and in the sky have energy to be exploited. Even themselves, mining their spirits into souls sold. Into nothing is sacred, not even their self. (laughs) 